Welcome back to Spectre Comics. This is going to be a video on comic book page layout. We're going to basically take some Spectre comic pages, different types of pages, different types of layouts, and analyze them. I'm going to explain what I'm trying to convey with storytelling in the way the comic page is laid out. I'm going to basically walk you through several examples and talk about why I did what I did. And the principles I'm going to be talking about are universal principles. We're not really talking about design of the page. Everybody's style is different, so it's not a stylized version of the layout. Everybody's layout is saying, but the principles of page layout are very universal. So we're going to start out with a cover page. This is um, the cover to issue five of Spectre Comics. Uh, we'll kind of start at the top and analyze the page. I've got the Spectre logo and then the title, and I use my issues as um, I use my issues as not only individual issues but also chapters in a larger graphic novel. So it's set up that way. So in this specific page, you can see it's a full page layout with an inset down here, and the idea behind this is the issue before this ended on a cliffhanger where we were following one group of characters, and then they disappeared. So rather than jumping right back into where they are now, I left that mystery, oh, they're disappeared, they're gone, what's happened to them? And so I didn't want to start the next issue, the next chapter, right back with them. You know, we, there's a little discovery there, what happened to them. So right now we're flashing to another group of characters who are concerned about the characters that disappeared, and we're flashing back to the home world, so the uh, just t uh, storytelling point in the last issue, uh, characters in space disappeared through a wormhole. We don't know what happened to them. We come right back on the next issue and we go back to the home world where the leaders are like, where did those guys go? So I created this establishing shot of back on the city, back on the world of Xantabar, the home world of the Spectre. So the first page of the new issue, we talk, we get the, we get the Spectre logo here. We get the title uh, of the chapter or issue. And then we have this large establishing shot in the city. We've got the Great Hall, which is the main building where a lot of the government uh, the government takes place. And then I've got an inset where the characters we're following back on the home world come into frame. One character is going to another character's office. So this page is set up where we have an establishing shot and an inset jumping right in with a character and kind of following his path into his interactions, his next interactions. So that's one type of shot. The next page we're going to look at is this is a two page spread. This is from issue six of Spectre Comics. It's really early in the issue where we're following a character. And the point of showing you this is to talk about point of view. So first shot is an establishing shot. An enemy ship lands on a platform. And there's a couple of descriptors right here. We're in the pr prisoner processing plant at the Ori mining facility. The Ori are the enemy, the, uh, the pro uh, antagonists of the story. And where they are, it's a little unknown, but somewhere in the Alari astro asteroid field. We're actually on an asteroid, land, you know, following this ship on the platform. Move on to the next panel. We're seeing some prisoners being unloaded going to the mining facility. The mining facility in the distance. Ship. So we're completely switching angles now to the point of view of somebody on the ground. And then we're backing up and turning again. Now, there is a flaw in the way I laid this out because I'm constantly changing direction. It might be confusing to read it that way. So overall establishing shot, a shot of the perspective from behind the ship looking. And, and the point of showing it this way was I wanted to show the facility where they were going. So as they're unloading, I wanted to show them this is where I'm going, the, the mining facility down the path. And then we re reverse, and the characters we're actually following, the, the, the Spectre prisoners, are coming out from being unloaded from the prisoner vessel. And we've got some guards here directing them down. Now, as we look at the two-page spread, the whole point of this is we're taking it from the perspective of this character right here. So this character's observing them, and that's the point of view we're trying to follow here. He's hidden in the background. He's watching the aliens getting brought to the mining facility and then now we hear them talking and they're dialoguing amongst themselves what's going on and then we end the shot 
with the character we're following, the character whose point of view we're trying to perceive in this page. So that's, again, the point of this uh, two-page spread is to talk about um, perspective. Who's, whose eyes are you looking through? Whose story are you following here? So let's look at the third page. Now this page, I wanted to talk about action in two different locations. So we've got characters on a ship, interacting, talking, trying to figure out a problem in real time. We've got another ship spinning out of control in, in the asteroid field, spinning towards an asteroid, you know, in danger. So we've got two characters interacting, what's going on. We've got the perspective outside and the overall space scene is happening as an underlay as we kind of pop in checking in with the characters. So here on the whole page, you can see what's going on with the action, but then you've got these characters up here interacting, talking about how do we fix the problem that's happening outside? How do we stop this ship from going out of control? So then they sit down, they're trying to solve the problem and they spring into action. So in the lower level, the lower space scene, we're zoomed in now on the asteroids, the ship is in motion and the ship is still spinning out of control, but now we're reacting. And then Prox here, the robot here, has the solution. He's gonna, he's gonna save the day. So the whole point as we take the different beats through the page, we're following the characters as they're talking and reacting to what's going on. And we, as the reader, as the observer, can see all the stuff happening outside, what they're reacting to. So that's basically um, action and uh, reaction with it, the characters on the page based on something that's going on. The next page I wanted to look at, another two page spread. And the point of this page is to kind of show something similar to what's happening in the last page. You know, the single page action spread where we're jumping in and out. This is just another example of it where I've got characters kind of doing something on the ship, interacting, talking. In, in this case, just for storytelling purposes, the power's out. We're trying, the robots are trying to get the power back online on, on, on the ship. Meanwhile, outside, there's enemies attacking the ship. The ship is defenseless. The shields, uh, they don't have shields. They don't have power. They don't have a way to attack and defend themselves. So we've got a small recon ship outside where one of the main characters is in the ship trying to lead the enemies away so they don't attack the main vessel. So as he's being chased down by the two enemies and just as a, a, a kind of a joke here where they're getting, you know, going this way and then going this way, the idea is, is that while this is all going on outside the ship, inside the ship, we're still trying to get power back online. Hurry up. We need to hurry it up. Quicken the pace. We've got a problem outside. And then jumping onto the two-page spread as this small saucer ship is being chased by the enemy ship. Here we find that he's actually drawing them away. So we've got another underlay of what's happening outside the ship as the small recon ship is drawing away the enemy. And we can see it inside. We're inside the cockpit now. Looking out, we can see them out here. So let's zoom in on that sh on that area. So you can see they're in the ship. Now it's, it's grayed out because the lights aren't on, the power's not on in the ship. But outside the front windshield, we can see the recon ship, spark in the recon ship, pulling away the enemy. Zooming out, he's drawing them away. We're reacting to that. And then in the final two shots, oh my gosh, what's happening? And as everybody's kind of working together to get the power back on and protect the ship until we can defend ourselves. Once the power's back on, no problem, because these two little ships are no match for the big Zebulon ship. So that's a two-page spread. And again, a lot of action, a lot of beats happening on the page. Um, the final thing I wanted to talk about was dialogue. So in this example, dialogue is driving the story. So we see Spark here talking through a monitor to the leaders back on the home world, and they're just communicating. And again, layout wise, here he's sitting on his captain's chair and he's talking into this monitor here and they're back on the home world talking to a screen, kind of doing a FaceTime kind of a thing. And the idea here is that how do you read the dialogue? How do you follow along to what's going on? So again, always read left to right, top to bottom. And we're just following the dialogue of what's happening. So you can see what's happening on the screen. They're talking here, reacting here. Again, you're always gonna read the one panel at a time, 
left to right, top to bottom. So first dialogue, reaction. Second dialogue, more dialogue from Spark on the ship. And I keep flashing back and forth between the perspective of who's talking. So here, we're following the perspective of the leaders back on the home world. They're watch watching the screen and communicating through the screen. Here we're at Spark's perspective. Here we're at Spark's perspective on the ship, and he's talking to them through the, through, through his screen. He's got a, a display as well. And we jump back to the leaders on the home uh, on the home world, in their office, talking on the screen, and then that wraps up this call right here. And now he's addressing the the rest of the crew. And this one's important because there's a lot of characters on screen and several of them are talking. So again, where you place the characters, where the balloons are based on sequence. So you're always going to read again, top to bottom, left to right. So that's how this page is laid out. So in this final panel, Reese is talking, Sparks responding, and then Arco's talking. And you're always going to read the upper and then move down, start in the upper left and move down to the lower right and follow the dialogue. That's the best way to understand. And, and sometimes it's hard when you have a lot of characters talking on screen and you don't know where to put the balloons. Sometimes you have to break up a scene like this. I wanted to do the bottom half of this, pa of this page a full panel so that I can get them all in one shot. But if it worked out where I needed somebody to talk, I might have had to do a different method of laying the page out to get the person who's talking like let's say Storbo was talking but he was talking first then I would put him in his own own shot have and then have Risa next so maybe I would do a close-up of him talking and put that over here and shift everything to the right and then slide Arco and it's it's where you lay out the characters where you lay out the pages so that is it so we talked about going back through the scenes we talked about establishing shots and doing insets um, we talked about a two-page spread and point of view. That's the point of this layout. We're talking about action scenes and the beats of the action through what's happening in two different locations. Uh, action outside versus action inside. So different artists have different ways that they do their layouts based on style. This is just happens to be my style. It's very clean, clean lines. Um, I, I appreciate all different types of styles. This just happens to be mine. So. Um, I hope you understood what I was trying to convey with, with the basic principles of why things are laid out the way they are and how the way they're laid out helps with the storytelling and how you read dialogue on a page and where to kind of locate characters and dialogue. So that's why we do the sketch real f fast at the beginning. You know, we lay out a page uh, real sketchy and we kind of figure out where the characters are and where the, where the text is going to be, where the dialogues, because you want to be able to read everything in sequence so that the story makes sense and you want to be able to locate things in sequence. So there's a couple of other principles I want to talk about quickly. Um, try not to switch perspective too frequently, um, really abruptly, because it's hard for the reader to follow where they are then. Um, they may not, it may not click on where they are, especially if you don't have establishing uh, elements in the background. If you, if you just have like a talking head and I'm talking to this character, then I'm jumping to this character People may not know where they are. So I always try to lay things out so that maybe in a previous uh, panel, they can see things. I can see these two characters are together, but then, then in the next panel, they're, that this person's talking, so I'm going to zoom in on them. So always kind of understand where people are and if it makes sense to the reader. If you read it and you can't, and it, let's say you're not familiar with the story or the characters and you were just jumping in, would, would it make sense to you? what they're saying and where they would be going and, and how to re basically how to read it and who's talking to who and what's what's actually happening. So because as we as we draw our comics, we tend to have less detail. What I tend to do in some of my pages is I'll start with a lot of detail at the beginning, but then as I get into the dialogue trying to just convey the story, I might add a lot less detail in because I'm just, I, you know, it takes a lot of time to draw that stuff. So you start with an establishing shot characters start talking, you see who's in the room, where they are, and then as I zoom in on each one as they're talking, I may have a lot less detail in my background. So a good principle is to start with an establishing shot, see where everything is, run through your detail, and then end with an establishing shot. So you can kind of remind the reader 
So I hope you enjoyed this quick walkthrough of basic comic book page layout and analysis. I hope that I was able to explain to you what the basic principles are, and then you can apply those to your comic book pages. It's all about storytelling. So if you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have anything to add, any comments, questions about comic book page layout or comic making in general, be sure to leave that in the comment section below. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Talk to you later.